Hey YouTube, it is Nebby, and in today's video I'm going to be running through four tips for each of the four playable classes in Star Wars Battlefront 2 that I haven't really seen anyone talk about. I haven't actually seen many people using these tips and I'm going to assume because of that that not many people know about these tips. So here are four secrets and tips for each class in Star Wars Battlefront 2. So let's start off with Assault. Now the Assault class is actually the most tanky class if you do use the right star cards and it's actually more tanky than the Heavy. So if you use Toughen Up and Assault Training especially, these are the two that are going to give you the most tankiness in combat, but Survivalist also helps in between gunfights. So Toughen Up is really good because it's basically the Adrenaline Stim of Battlefront 1. It means that you can just click it and you get health back for all the time that you are not taking damage. So as long as you aren't taking damage, you're getting constant health regeneration. Survivalist is good because it shortens your health regeneration delay, and then Assault Training gives you health for every time you kill someone. So using this loadout, you can actually be more tanky than a Heavy, and I say this because Heavies only have 200 health, but they have very minimal healing abilities. So they have 200 health, but they have no real way of gaining this health back. So what an Assault can do to verse a Heavy is shoot them a bit, and then once they've taken a bit of damage, you can go behind cover, use your Toughen Up ability, and then once you're back to full, you can pop out again and hit them down. And I use this all the time to wear down Heavies, and especially to break their shields. So use this strategy to beat Heavies and to beat enemies with more health than you, especially reinforcements as well. And then once you've killed the enemy, you're going to get health back for actually killing them. So, it's sort of funny. I find a lot of people complaining about heavies and how much health they have. But I actually think that the Assault is a tankier class than the Heavy because of all this health regeneration stuff that they do get. And I think the Assault is a better class for this reason. Because they have the tankiness with these abilities. But they also have insane damage output with their Vanguard ability and with, with their main weapon. The CR2 is extremely powerful, especially in close quarters combat. So that's the first tip with the Assault class. Now the next tip for Assault is your choice of weapon. So I believe that for the Assault class, the CR2 is easily the best weapon. Now one secret that I have with the CR2 that you guys might not know about is that you can actually change how the crosshair looks. Now this is extremely useful because the regular CR2 crosshair is sort of like a triangle with three little lines and you sort of just have to spray in between those lines and hope for the best. But when you use certain mods on the CR2, it actually means that you can change the crosshair. So, for example, when you have the CR2, if you chuck on the Night Vision mod, it actually means that you'll get the crosshairs with the vertical and horizontal lines and the dot in the middle. Now this is obviously going to help you aiming because you've got that reticle in the middle of your screen to aim exactly where you want to shoot. So when you are using it from hip firing, it actually means that you're going to be able to be more accurate because you can actually get that reticle right on the enemy, which is extremely useful at aiming and just getting more kills. One thing I did have to say about this though is sometimes it actually doesn't start up, like when you spawn in, it might come with the normal reticle. A way that I found to fix this is to use your Vanguard ability and then cancel it out basically straight away. And every time that I do that, it just basically gives me the reticle back. So I don't know if that's a glitch with dice. I don't know if it's meant to be a different reticle when you use this mod, but it is the case. So I recommend using this if you want that reticle in the middle so you can aim better with the CR2. The other two tips that I have with Assault involve the Vanguard ability. So the first one is the mobility that you get with the Vanguard. Now I know a lot of people use Vanguard just for the huge damage output that you get with the Scattergun, but I actually think that Vanguard is more useful as a mobile tool than as a damage tool. So what I like to do with the Vanguard is at the start of every round I get it out straight away and I run straight to the objective because not only does this get you into the battle faster and means you can get a head start on all your teammates and the enemies, you can get more points quickly because you're getting into the battle faster. It also means that you can get to important choke points and points of interest on the map first. Now this is extremely important in matches where there might be a lot of choke points. For example, on Kamino, you can get to the inside room first as the droids, and this is extremely important because it means that you can hold it down and you can start funneling the Republic through the choke points rather than your team funneling through the choke points. I also think this one's extremely useful on Takadana because you can almost beat the resistance to the top of the hill. Not quite, but you can get there very quickly and catch them off guard when they're not expecting it. I often use this one to wipe enemies out off the point and get my team onto the point very quickly using the Assault class. Now the other tip I have with the Vanguard is if you're not the aggressive type of player that most Assault people are, there are a few Assault players who like to sit back, use different guns besides the CR2 like the EL-16H FE I believe it is called. 
there is another option for you guys with the Vanguard. So the Vanguard Slug is actually a Vanguard with much greater range. So this one means you don't actually have to rush up close to enemies. You can actually shoot them at a distance of up to about 30, 40 meters, I do believe. So as you guys will see in the footage, I'm sniping these guys from a pretty decent range. So even if you hit them in the body, it does decent damage. And if you can line up a headshot, it does insane damage. So using the scattergun is not just for short range, guys. If you are more of a sit back, sort of shoot from a range type player, you can use the Vanguard Slug to your advantage to get those kills with that ability. So don't think that ability is useless for you guys. For the Heavy class, a really good combination of star cards to use is the Bounty Hunter card and the Defender card. Now the Defender card is actually the exclusive Heavy card which you can only get on this class and it basically means that for every time that you get hit by a weapon or an explosive, you get score for getting hit. So you can get up to 9 per hit, I'm only on the 6 at the moment, but basically it means that if you're going up against high fire rate weapons like the CR2, anything that's hitting you lots of times, you're going to get a lot of points for being hit by that. And with the Bounty Hunter, you can increase your total score by up to 20%, which is just going to stack. So this is a really good way to gain passive points, but not really doing a lot. And I'm not encouraging you guys to just continually go on and die over and over, but it's a good way to encourage you to get into gunfights. So the more gunfights you get into, the more score you're going to be taking for getting hit and for also killing enemies. So that's a good one to keep in mind with the Heavy. And also remember that the longer you stay alive, the higher your multiplier is going to go up to two times. So... If you get to two times, you're going to be actually gaining 12 for each hit that you take with the level 2 star card, and you're going to be getting more points um, from the bounty hunter as well. So just keep that in mind. Try to stay alive, but you want to be engaging in lots of gunfights and being active on the battlefront. Next up, with the heavy, I have the ion turret. So a lot of people have been using this recently. I see it a lot on maps like Crate and Hoth. Basically, the, the ion turret has been buffed since Battlefront 1. It now locks onto humans and vehicles. So it does prioritize vehicles, but if there are no vehicles inside or within range, it will start shooting at humanoids and troopers on the ground. So using this, you can actually rack up a whole bunch of points by not really doing anything at all. If you check it on maps like Hoth, I found that it is extremely useful because people will be running in from the spawn and it'll just hit them and it just wears them down and also gets you a lot of assists, which is more points again. So once again, using this with Bounty Hunter, I think is an extremely useful combo for racking up a lot of points while playing as the Heavy. One thing to note though, I have noticed that using it on Crate, it did get shot down a lot by the AI AT-ATs, the big gorilla tanks. I like to place it on the flanks of the map, all the way on the edge, so that the AI AT-ATs don't actually look that far and actually don't shoot it. So it means that it's going to be alive for longer and get you more points that way. So similarly to the Assault tip that I gave you guys with the CR2, this actually applies to the Heavy as well. I believe it applies to maybe one or two guns. I know it definitely works with the DC-15 LE, which is one of the better Heavy guns. So basically, the main stock standard crosshair for this gun is just a circle, which is actually quite hard to aim with, especially with the recoil, because it means you can't exactly pinpoint those headshots, and it means you're not going to be able to exactly get the recoil under control. But if you actually use the improved zoom mod, it means you're going to get the crosshair with the full lines and the dot in the center as the CR2 does. So I actually believe this is an extremely useful thing for the Heavy, especially more than the CR2, because the Heavy guns have quite a lot of recoil, and it's sort of hard to aim when it's just in a big circle. So I like to use this mod for the DC-15 LE so that I can improve my accuracy using this gun, and I've found huge improvements when using this mod, just with my overall gunplay and my overall aim with the Heavy. So I would suggest that to you guys, to use the improved zoom with the DC-15 LE, and I also believe, now I'm not too sure about this one, but the FWMB 10K, which is the first order heavy gun, it has one called the Night Vision, which I think is the same as the CR2. So I haven't tried this, I haven't actually unlocked it, but I believe that one might also give you the better crosshair. So definitely test that one out. I think it's very I think it's very beneficial for your gunplay when playing as the heavy. The last tip that I have for Heavy is to definitely try out the Detonite Charge. Now, I think this is infinitely better than the Impact Grenade, and the reason for this is because it has the exact same radius multipliers, so when you level it up, it has the exact same explosion radius as the Impact Grenade, so you're not losing any radius or explosion damage there. But the Detonite Charge is just so much more versatile than the Impact Grenade. You can use it as an Impact Grenade, as in you throw it out, and as soon as it goes to someone that you want to blow up, 
you can just click detonate and it'll go straight away. You can detonate it in midair, and you can also leave it to sit in certain areas where you think my enemies might clump up and then use it to blow up multiple enemies at once. So I would definitely recommend this. Next up we have the Officer. Now I think this is probably the best or the second best class in the game. It's insanely powerful with its blurg and with its abilities. I just think that this class is actually insane. But two things that I wanted to point out with its battle command. So first off, the battle command has recently been buffed. Thanks to A. Walsh for letting me know about this tip, but the battle command has actually been buffed. So previously, any command, the recharge command, the battle command, etc., they would only give you one point for each person that you used it on. So if you healed eight people, or if you used the recharge command on eight people, you'd only get eight points, which is pretty terrible. There's not much incentive to use it as an officer, but they've actually buffed up the points that you receive for this. So now you can use it at the very start of the game. If you wait a bit and let your team run in front of you and use it, you'll actually get huge point stacks from doing this. So you can heal up to like 19 people at a time, obviously, but more realistically, you're probably going to get between 10 and 15 people, but it's a great way to start off the game with getting a lot of points. I believe you can get upwards of 400 points doing this, which is pretty decent just to start off the game. So every time you see a clump of teammates together, you can use this ability to get a lot more points than you previously were able to. The other tip that I had with the Battle Command abilities was that it'll actually let you know how many people are within your radius of your ability down the bottom right corner. So as you guys will know, there's the abilities down the bottom right. And in the middle ability for the Battle Command, it actually has a number. So this can go from 1 to 20. And this number represents the amount of people that will be affected by your ability when you press the button. So basically, if there are 8 people in front of you in your radius for the ability, it'll tell you that there are 8 people ready to go and then you can press the button and you'll get rewarded for doing it on eight people it can go up to 20 so if there's the number 20 in that little ability icon i would definitely press the battle command or the recharge command whatever you're using to get those team points and also to buff your teammates so i think that's a nice little tip to keep in mind when playing as the officer probably the most important tip for the officer is also using the right gun so at the moment the blurg is easily the most overpowered gun in the game in my opinion. I think it is insane in terms of its damage and its range. It actually can outgun a lot of specialist guns at a distance. So I believe that if you use this gun you'll have a lot more success than using any other gun with the officer class. Once you upgrade the blurg with a couple of mods it actually is insanely powerful. It starts off as a 2 burst but if you level it up enough it actually can upgrade to a 4 burst which is double the damage essentially with every click of the trigger. You can also get the reduced recoil mod and also the exploding shot mod. I don't actually use the exploding shot because I don't believe the payoff is worth it because your gun overheats twice as fast. So I use the reduced recoil and the increased um, burst mode. But yeah, I would definitely recommend using this gun. It is easily the most powerful on the officer class and probably the most powerful blaster in the game as it currently stands. The last tip that I have for you guys on the officer class is to do with the disruption ability. So... I don't really see many people using this ability to its full potential. I see it being used a lot just to disrupt an enemy or two at a time and to disrupt their gun. But what people don't realise is that disruption can not only affect enemies and all the enemies within the radius. So you can get 5 plus enemies at one time with disruption. But you can also get turrets and you can also stop explosives from blowing up. So if someone throws a grenade next to you, you can actually use the disruption to stop that grenade from blowing up next to you which means you're not going to take the damage from it. And also, just when you're going to disrupt enemies, it's a good idea to try to get a flank and try to get a bunch of enemies at once so that you can help your team that way, which means you're going to be getting the challenge for disrupting and getting assists, and you're also going to be helping yourself out because you're going to be disrupting more people at once. Last up, we have the specialist class. Now, the first tip that I have for the specialist class is probably my favourite tip in this entire video and it involves the repulsor cannon which is the ca 87 ability on the specialist class so i've never really seen anyone use this ever i've been hit by it once in all of my time playing battlefront 2 and i've only recently started using it and it has a whole bunch of different uses it is quite amazing in my eyes guys it is so underused and it's just incredibly fun to use it's entertaining to use and it's also extremely effective in different situations so basically the repulsor cannon is the CA-87, but it doesn't do much damage. It has a little bit of damage, but it's not enough to kill someone in one hit. But what it does is it basically knocks the enemies over. So it's essentially a force push, similar to Luke's force push. Now this can be used for a whole bunch of different scenarios. It can be used to push multiple enemies off an objective. It can be used to knock enemies over and shoot them when they're getting up. And it can be used to hit heroes over to give your team time to shoot them while they're down. 
I've used them in each scenario, and it's extremely effective and fun to use. What I like to do against heroes is, you knock them over once with the repulse, and it actually gives you two uses, so by the time they're getting up again, you can actually use it again. And then it'll automatically swap it back to your main gun, and while they're getting up, you can get a lot of free shots in on them before they can actually get up and shoot back. So, especially when you're with a group of teammates, you can use this ability to knock over the hero, and he will take a lot of damage in the process of getting knocked over twice. And yes, for everyone wondering, you can knock heroes off the edge. I haven't got any footage of it, but you can definitely do it. I've done it to Wookiees before, but not heroes, and it would be insanely fun to use in heroes and villains if there were troopers, but unfortunately there isn't. So, if you ever see Galactic Assault heroes running around and you see the opportunity to use this to knock them off the edge, maybe go for it if they're annoying you and they're too hard to kill. I also highly suggest using this one against heavies. Heavies can be really annoying, and they're very hard to counter as a specialist class especially with their shield and their supercharged sentry. So anytime the heavy is using his shield or his sentry, I would actually recommend using the repulsor to knock them over. And the reason for this is, first off, they can't block when they're knocked over. Like, the shield, I believe, might disappear. I haven't actually tried it against a shield, but it means that you'll be able to hit them in the back when they're getting up. And also, when you knock them over when they're using the sentry, it means that, First off, they get knocked over, so you can get them while they're being knocked over. And secondly, it takes some time to actually charge up their sentry and start shooting again. So in the time that they're doing that, that they're charging up their sentry, you can actually be shooting them and getting free damage on them. So I think this star card is extremely useful to counter the heavy class when playing as a specialist, and I would definitely recommend trying it out in, in online matches. Next up we have two tips for the infiltration ability, so the first one is similar to the vanguard mobility. I actually think infiltration is extremely useful for getting to choke points and getting to points of interest quickly and for running faster as a specialist class. So obviously you can use the personal shield in tandem with this one. If you're taking damage you can use the infiltration to start running quickly and then pop a personal shield and you can get to cover more quickly using this combo. But also what I like to do is I like to do it to run to my favourite sniping spots at the start of a game. Especially on Jakku, there's a spot with the first order where you can zoom in and you can basically snipe into the resistance spawn, which you guys will see in the footage here. I go on a massive kill streak, But I use the infiltration to run up there so I could start shooting them before they could even get out of their spawn, which was pretty effective to be honest. So that's definitely a good tip to keep in mind with the specialist class. Use infiltration as a mobility tool as well as a short range damage tool. On the topic of infiltration, I believe that you guys should all use the hardened infiltration ability. If you're going to spec in infiltration and not just use the standard one, I believe you should definitely go for the hardened infiltration ability. The other ones just aren't worth it to me because I actually got the purple star card for killstreak infiltration with the first order crate that I won. So. I thought it would be really good, but it actually shortens the length of infiltration normally, so it lasts for way less time than it would with the normal one. So basically, you have to keep on getting kills from the outset of using the ability, which I don't like because I usually use it for mobility. So it means that when I'm using it for mobility and running from the spawn, I can't actually run as far because I have the kill streak infiltration one on. So I would highly suggest using the hardened infiltration one, and that is because it reduces the incoming damage that you take while using infiltration. So not only will you have more damage output with infiltration because the EA4 is a better short range weapon than snipers, but it also means that people will do less damage to you, which gives you a better chance to fight those assault classes, those heavy classes in short range. Another tip with the specialist class is the two different guns that I have for the two different playstyles. So obviously the NT-242 is probably the best sniper in the game. It one-shots specialists to the body, it one-shots assaults and officers to the head, and also heavies to the head actually. So it's actually extremely powerful. It's the most powerful sniper with the most damage output. And I think you should use this one if you're going to be a true sniper at the back of the map. Assaulting the enemy from extremely long range where assault weapons and heavy weapons wouldn't really have much of an effect on you. So. If you're going to be a true sniper and stay at the back, I believe you should use the NT-242. But if you're going to be a more aggressive player, say you're trying to get more kills with the specialist class, I would actually recommend using the A280 CFE. Because this one has an extremely high fire rate compared to all the other specialist guns. And it's much more useful in close quarters combat compared to all of the other snipers. And the reason for this is it is a lot less punishing when you miss your shots. So you can still miss a few shots and still land a lot more shots than you miss using this gun. If you're an aggressive specialist player who wants to push up or maybe it's a short range map sort of like the Death Star 
or other maps like that. If it's shorter range, you might want to use the AT or AD CFE to mix things up and to try a short range specialist class. If you're willing as well, you can grind this one out to get the three burst mode for it, which makes it a lot more powerful. I believe if you burst um, an officer on assault on the head using this gun, you can actually get them in one burst. So it's extremely powerful if used correctly and yeah, I would definitely recommend it over the NT-242 in short quarters combat because it does give you a chance and lets you stand up to those assaults, those heavies and those officers in close quarters combat. So yeah, that is four tips for each of the four classes in Star Wars Battlefront 2. Make sure to leave a like if you learned anything new. Make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you guys want to see more of this type of video. Let me know if you have any more tips down in the comment section below. And I want to wish all of you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I'm going to bounce and I'll see you all in the next video.